I was deep in the heart of a desolate valley, alone, cut off from the rest of the world with no cell service to rely on. Darkness was descending rapidly as I lingered on a remote trail. Just when the last glimmers of daylight were fading, I encountered a local man, a seemingly friendly face in the gathering gloom. He offered to show me a hidden camping spot near the road and by the river, cunningly concealed from prying eyes. As I settled in, I lit a fire, cracked open a beer, and tuned into my friend's comedy podcast, letting the laughter cut through the eerie silence of the wilderness. Little did I know, I was making myself loud and conspicuously visible in the gathering darkness. With nightfall already upon me, I decided to forego setting up my tent and opted instead to sleep in the back of my trusty truck, nestled beneath its topper, surrounded by all my gear. Morning broke, and I greeted it with a crackling fire, a freshly cracked beer, and the sizzle of breakfast cooking. But then, my heart stopped. At the edge of my campsite, there was a figure, a man, his eyes never once meeting mine. His presence sent chills down my spine. This man, with a tangled, ratty beard and clothes adorned with over a hundred plastic grocery bags, appeared like a specter from the depths of the wilderness. I tried to break the silence, commenting on the beautiful day, but received no response. Offering him breakfast and beer yielded the same eerie silence. He began to pace around the outskirts of my camp, never once acknowledging my existence. Panic began to well up within me as I realized this encounter might take a sinister turn. With my bear spray and buck knife within arm's reach, I decided to confront him directly. My voice trembled with a mix of fear and anger as I issued an ultimatum, Motherf asterisk 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 you're either going to acknowledge me or get out of here. Still, he ignored me, and at that moment, I knew I had to take drastic measures to protect myself. I grabbed the bear mace and took a few determined steps toward him. In response, he slunk away into the shadows, disappearing into the wild. I wasted no time. I hastily packed my belongings into my truck and fled the place, thanking my own laziness for choosing to sleep in the truck rather than a vulnerable tent. As I drove away, the unsettling feeling that he might have been watching me throughout the night sent shivers down my spine, reminding me of the eerie encounter I had narrowly escaped in the depths of that desolate valley. It was a memorable camping trip that my siblings and I embarked on. Little did we know, we were in for an unforgettable adventure. Our journey took a dramatic turn when a mighty storm swept through the area, unleashing its fury upon our campsite. The first sign of trouble was the ominous dark clouds that seemed to engulf the sky. Thunder rumbled in the distance, hinting at the impending chaos. We watched in awe as lightning bolts slammed into the lake and crawled endlessly through the clouds, illuminating the night with an eerie, electric glow. As the storm intensified, so did the winds, and an unrelenting roar filled the air. Our tent, our only shelter from the tempest, began to lift off the ground. Fear gripped us as we considered abandoning our feeble shelter for the relative safety of our car. In the end, the decision was made for us. With the tent teetering on the edge of disaster, we made a mad dash for the car, our hearts pounding in our chests. We huddled inside, safe but shaken, and watched in disbelief as our tent collapsed and was unceremoniously blown into a nearby tree by the merciless wind. Inside the car, we were not much better off. It shook violently as if caught in the grip of a vengeful giant. The relentless storm showed no signs of abating, and we feared for our safety. It was then that we decided to abandon our campsite entirely and seek refuge at my grandpa's house, which was about a twenty-minute drive away. The night was filled with trepidation as we navigated the dark, rain-soaked roads to reach my grandpa's house. We couldn't help but wonder about the fate of our campground, but it was a risk we were not willing to take. Our safety came first. The following day, 
as we ventured back to the campground, we were met with a grim sight. Part of the campground was closed off, and we learned that a small tornado had passed through the area the previous night. Trees were strewn about, blocking some of the roads. We couldn't be sure whether the tornado had occurred during or after our harrowing adventure, but it was clear that it had been dangerously close to where we had been camping. We took the time to clean up our campsite, even though it was in disarray, and then we left. I couldn't help but feel a mix of awe and terror at having witnessed a storm so powerful and frightening. The memory of that night would stay with me forever. There was one final, somewhat comical, twist to our camping misadventure. My sleeping bag had vanished in the chaos of the storm, never to be found again. It was a small price to pay for our safety, though, and a reminder of the unpredictable and formidable forces of nature that can be encountered when camping in the great outdoors. The most bone-chilling experience happened when I was camping with my wife. A relentless windstorm unleashed chaos, making trees crash to the ground and branches rained down upon us. We were trapped in a forest filled with jack pines, and fear gripped us as nature unleashed its fury. But that's just the beginning of the spine-tingling tales. Picture this, I was out in the woods with my best friend, miles away from civilization. It was one of those semi-maintained camping spots, the kind that only the bravest adventurers dare to visit. We thought we were alone until my buddy went to use the rundown outhouse. What he found inside still haunts me. He beckoned me over, and I couldn't have anticipated what lay behind that creaky door. Inside, we discovered not one, not two, but three massive backpacks. These weren't your average packs, they were enormous, the kind you'd need for week-long treks. Two of them contained nothing out of the ordinary, just quality camping gear. But the third one, oh, the third one sent chills down our spines. It was filled to the brim with skittles. Bags upon bags of those colorful candies in every flavor and size imaginable. We were camping there for four days and never saw a single soul. Those enigmatic backpacks remained untouched when we left, but the questions haunted us. Who left all that gear? And why, in the name of all things eerie, did someone pack an unimaginable 80 liters of Skittles into one backpack? Now, here's a tale that will make your blood run cold. I was backpacking alone with my trusty dog, deep in the heart of nowhere. Just as I was about to doze off under a simple tarp shelter, the tranquility shattered. A truck roared to life nearby, and drunken voices filled the night. The ominous symphony was followed by the unmistakable sound of gunfire. Panic surged through me as I realized the shots were coming my way. They probably didn't know I was there, but I had no intention of sticking around to find out. I leashed up my faithful pup, and together, we vanished into the darkness, leaving behind the eerie echoes of reckless gunfire and the unsettling feeling that we had come dangerously close to crossing paths with a pack of drunken yahoos. In the wild, there are some things you just don't mess with, and I wasn't about to become their ghost story. In the heart of the desolate Arizona wilderness, my friends and I embarked on a camping trip. Beneath the inky black sky, we lay peacefully in our tents, surrounded by the eerie silence of the wild. Then, a sinister sound pierced the night, a strange, guttural sniffing, just outside our canvas sanctuary. My first instinct was to attribute it to some curious beast attracted by the scent of unattended garbage. But as seconds crawled by, the menacing sniffing drew closer, moving from my tent to the next, causing a shiver to course through my entire body. In that ominous darkness, the realization clawed at my mind, this was no ordinary creature. Fear surged through me, and my companions clung to one another, our silence conveying the collective dread that hung in the air. Suddenly, a bold friend erupted from one of the nearby tents, 
his screams and the ominous glint of a firearm intended to ward off whatever lurked in the shadows. Yet, what we discovered sent chills down our spines, it was not a wild animal. It was a man, a malevolent intruder who had brazenly rummaged through our coolers and food and audaciously sniffed at our tents. Our adrenaline-pumped friend chased the stranger away, and without a second thought, we hastily packed our belongings and fled the accursed campsite. But that wasn't the end of our terrifying escapades. A year later, we returned to the same area, foolishly believing our prior ordeal had been a one-time ordeal. Determined to outsmart any potential stalkers, we decided to sleep in the beds of our vehicles, assuming they couldn't possibly be infiltrated. As I lay there, in the dead of night, wrapped in the cocoon of my SUV, an eerie sensation gripped me, a blinding light suddenly bore down on my face. My instinct screamed at me to react, to question the intruder, but a sinister foreboding silenced me. Feigning slumber, I clung to the shadows, my heart racing. Beside me, my girlfriend did the same, and I strained my ears, listening intently. No more sniffing this time, just the unsettling presence of the unknown. The light shifted, revealing an ominous figure standing by the vehicle, his gaze fixed upon us, unblinking. Panic welled up inside me, and I waited, holding my breath, as he moved on to the next truck, his beam of light illuminating more of my slumbering friends. Finally, when the man left the campsite, I exploded out of my vehicle, rousing my friends, who had been playing the same chilling game of pretend. As we shared our fears, we realized the undeniable truth, Tucson, Arizona's desolate wilderness held secrets that no one should ever unearth. An eerie, unexplainable malevolence lurked in those shadows, ready to steal away our peace and haunt our darkest dreams. As I ventured through the dense, eerie bush, my senses on high alert, I stumbled upon a chilling encounter that sent shivers down my spine. There, in the heart of a desolate valley, I came face to face with a man, his AR-15 menacingly poised and ready. A gut-wrenching fear washed over me, an instinctive knowing that I was in a place I shouldn't be. Summoning every ounce of courage, I forced myself to speak, my voice trembling with unease. Hey, just out bird hunting, how are you doing? I inquired, attempting to mask the gnawing dread that was tightening its grip on me. The man's response was anything but reassuring. With an unnerving pause that felt like an eternity, he finally spoke, his words dripping with an unsettling menace. Fine, he hissed, I'm hunting deer. Deer's season was far from open, and his choice of weapon was entirely illegal for such pursuits. His disheveled appearance sent shivers down my spine. He resembled the most terrifying 50-year-old meth addict imaginable, clutching that deadly AR-15 in his emaciated hands. Desperately, I tried to maintain composure, my voice trembling as I asked, do you know the best way for me to go to find some birds? His response was laced with an eerie malevolence. Well. I imagine you might find some back the way you came. As his voice grew sharper with that ominous phrase, I knew I had to heed his ominous warning. With a heart pounding like a drum, I retreated, leaving the sinister figure behind in that dark, foreboding wilderness. I couldn't shake the feeling that something sinister lurked just beyond that eerie trail. The next day, I reported the harrowing incident to the sheriff, my mind still haunted by the encounter. To this day, I remain in the dark about what exactly transpired in those haunted woods. As a young boy, I found myself trapped in a nightmarish scenario during a chilling camping expedition in the heart of the foreboding mountains that encircled our remote rural town. The bitter grasp of winter had already settled upon the land, yet my friend and I were undeterred. Our goal was to secure a superior fishing spot, 
and so we ventured a mile away from our group of fellow 16 to 19 year olds. With only one tent to shelter our entire group, we had little choice but to construct a makeshift lean-to against a massive, looming boulder in a desolate clearing. The flickering campfire's feeble light barely fended off the encroaching darkness, and as the night wore on, an unsettling sensation gnawed at my psyche, a haunting feeling that we were being observed. Initially, I brushed off this primal unease, attributing it to the natural apprehension that can accompany isolation in the wild. But the disquieting sensation only grew stronger, morphing into an undeniable, palpable fear that clung to me like a spectral shroud. It was then that I heard the ominous rustling of leaves in the inky blackness surrounding us. My first instinct was to dismiss it as the stealthy approach of a mountain lion, a creature I had encountered and learned to respect in these rugged terrains. To bolster my courage, I fervently stoked the fire, its crackling flames casting eerie, dancing shadows that seemed to mock my unease. However, my courage waned when the full moon's silvery light painted a stark and horrifying tableau before me. Amidst the shadows and moonbeams, I discerned the figure of a man standing at the very edge of our clearing. The intensity of the encounter sent shivers down my spine as our eyes locked, and I felt an otherworldly connection with this sinister interloper. Time seemed to stretch infinitely as we held each other's gaze, an unspoken malevolence hanging in the air like a dark omen. My body was paralyzed, gripped by terror, and I could do nothing but watch as the man, presumably staring right back at me, began to move. With a measured, deliberate pace, he turned away from me and melted into the obsidian depths of the woods, retreating in the opposite direction. The spell was broken, but my heart continued to pound like a frenzied drum, and I realized that I had been clutching my friend's .357 revolver, the cold steel a stark reminder of the threat that had materialized before us. Though I now realized the wisdom of taking action, of calling out or investigating the intruder's intentions, that chilling night in the wilderness still clings to the recesses of my memory. It remains an indelible scar etched in my mind, a haunting specter that refuses to fade, forever haunting my dreams and casting a shadow over my adventures in the wild. I'll never forget that fateful night when my friends and I embarked on a backpacking adventure deep in the heart of the Sawtooth Mountains in Idaho. Nestled at the bottom of a valley with imposing rocky walls on either side, our campsite seemed like the perfect place to rest after a day of trekking. As night fell and we settled into our tents, the serenity of the wilderness embraced us. The stars above glistened brightly, and the distant howls of coyotes added to the mystical ambience of the place. We were surrounded by the grandeur of nature, and it was both awe-inspiring and humbling. But then, the tranquility was shattered. Suddenly, I was jolted awake by an earth-shattering sound, one that sent shivers down my spine. It was the unmistakable roar of a rock slide, a terrifying symphony of destruction that echoed through the valley. My heart raced as I realized that we were in the path of danger. I could hear the rocks tumbling down the steep walls of the valley, growing louder and closer with each passing second. The ground beneath us seemed to tremble as the boulders crashed through the forest, snapping trees like twigs and obliterating everything in their path. The darkness of the night added to the fear, as I couldn't see anything beyond the confines of my tent. My instinct screamed at me to flee, to escape the impending catastrophe, but reason prevailed. I knew that stumbling blindly in the pitch-black darkness would be more perilous than staying put. Huddled in my tent, I clung to hope and luck, praying that our campsite had been spared by the merciless descent of those colossal rocks. Minutes felt like hours as we lay there, helpless, our senses heightened, and adrenaline coursing through our veins. The cacophony of destruction raged on, the rocks seemingly getting closer and closer. It was a feeling of vulnerability I had never known before, a stark reminder of the unforgiving power of nature. Morning eventually broke, 
and with it came a sliver of hope. We cautiously emerged from our tents, scanning the surroundings for signs of the devastation. Strangely, there were none. The once menacing sounds had dissipated, leaving us in an eerie silence. We couldn't find any evidence of the rock's descent. It was as if they had never ventured closer than a quarter mile from our campsite. The valley, once again serene and beautiful, betrayed no indication of the turmoil that had unfolded in the darkness. Yet, the haunting memory of that night lingered in our minds. It was an experience that would forever remind us of the unpredictability of nature and the fragile line that separates us from the awesome, and sometimes terrifying, power of the wilderness.